G'day and welcome back to Derriere Farms with me, Farmer Jay. Today we're going to be continuing a deep dive into Precision Farming 22 and we'll be talking about field preparation and seeding as we continue to try and get a farm up to the perfect environmental score. Now, we have several more videos to go in the series after this, I'm afraid, or I'm happy to tell you, as we continue our deep dive. So make sure you subscribe to the channel to be notified when those videos are released. I also apologize, my videos are a little bit longer than some, because I cover all the oddities that we're discovering that are not listed in Giant's documentation. And I also took an existing farm and I'm converting it over to precision farming rather than starting from scratch. Why? Because I figured most people want to keep their farm that they have rather than starting again. Now, it would be a lot quicker if I just started from scratch and went through the basics. If you haven't done so already, I recommend, and I'll link the playlist at the end, but I recommend you watch the existing videos we have, as I said, because we're taking an existing farm and not starting from scratch. So we covered Basically, how to take our soil samples, what equipment's needed, what an RTK station does. We covered what the yields are, um, or yield bonuses, especially from things like fertilization and lime. Both of those have their own videos, and both of them have quite a few oddities that once you figure it out, will help you convert your existing farm to precision farming. Anyway, like I said, today we're going to be covering field preparation and seeding. As I said in my other videos, you still need to do everything that the base game requires, including mulching and rolling, To be able to get your standard bonus without that the bonus you get from precision farming isn't that meaningful so if you don't mulch and you don't roll you lose five percent yield and even though those two mulching and rolling don't count towards your environmental score the maximum point you get from your environmental score, if you have 100%, is 15% bonus yield. Now, by not mulching and not rolling, you take away 5%, so the maximum bonus, even if you were able to max, even if you were able to max out, your environmental score would be a 10% bonus instead of a 15% bonus. So, where to begin? Well, how about we take a look at our environmental score and we'll see how it's gone from 50 some percent. Um, I think it was, you get five points, you get 15 points. Um, so how it's already got an extra bonus from taking our soil samples. But we've gone from that 50-ish percent range, and we've got our overall environmental score up to 64, just by following the steps in the previous videos. And some of the fields that we've already worked on, as you can see, I've got this one up to 97%, and I'm going to show you why it's not 100% yet. Don't understand, well, these were existing fields too. Um,
and I'll explain those two fields. Well, the reason those two fields are at a lower percentage point is because they are missing, if you look, a nitrogen score. It's virtually non-existent. Why? Because those two fields were soybeans, and soybeans don't require any nitrogen. So, um, I didn't get any nitrogen score for those. They, my existing fields also had the weeds taken care of. I'd used a weeder before, um, installing precision farming. So I haven't been getting any bonuses for weeding, but we will do a separate video on weeding. But as you can see, this field, which we just harvested, is now up to 79%, and this one's 80%. Um, that other one is up to 92%. And again, for those of you, this is for those of you just joining us, your major environmental score doesn't really change until after you've harvested a field. So even though we had to put fertilizer into our fields, it's not registering and won't register until after we do the harvest. So what I've done so far to prepare is I've already mulched and limed the fields. Um, as you can see from here, if you thought I've already followed the liming video. I didn't need to lime these fields because the pH was still good. It was 6.5 out of 6.75. Um, but I limed them anyway, ahead of the mulcher. And it used a fraction of the amount of lime it did that I initially had to put down. So I'm not spending as much as if, well, in the long run, it's going to work out the same. In the short term, it keeps the field at the optimal value. And I want to see what the yield difference is between this half of the field and this half of the field is. The other thing it saved me, because I'm able to go a lot further on a full lime spreader by doing it after each harvest is I'm not constantly running back to the lime station or to the store to refill the lime spreader. I'm able to cover three, well, depending on the size of the fields, I'm able to cover, well, this field, that field, there's another field over the hill there. And still I had half a tank of lime left. Um, Whereas I think the first time I did it to bring these fields up to the lime, the correct lime level, I went through a tank and a half, almost two tanks just on the three fields because they were started from the absolute bare minimum and I had to bring them up to the maximum. Whether you want to do it that way is entirely up to you, but hopefully that makes sense. Now, the next thing is, with the mulching and the liming out of the way, Giants tells us that in terms of our environmental score, the most environmentally friendly option we have is to use a direct drill seeder so we don't have to do any type of cultivation. And I believe... Even with a shallow cultivator, you only get five points instead of the maximum number of points. And with a plow, you get zero environmental points because it's the most invasive of all. I had to think there for a second. The most invasive of all tillage types. It creates erosion and so on and so on. So there's two options we have. If we go into our cedar menu, I'm gonna use 
this CETA here for the small field. Because uh, the area we're in right now is a relatively small field. If I use the big Paralink co-drill, uh, it's 23.2 meters, and it doesn't really have enough room at the end of the fields to turn around properly because of the trees, whereas this one is going to be just fine. Now, I'm using this one instead of this one. Even though they're both direct drills, uh, because this one only has seed capacity. These ones I don't want to go down to because they're six meters. Not that that's a huge difference, but it still takes a little bit longer. So that's why I'm choosing to use this one. So I will be able to put down some of my fertilization at the same time as doing my seeding. So let's begin. Now, let's talk about variable rate seeding. As you can see, um, I can either activate or deactivate the uh, automatic application rate, which means I have to adjust it manually. Just like with the lime spreader or with the fertilizer spreader, I have to adjust, in this case, because I've got a seed tank and a fertilizer tank, I would have to adjust both manually. And that's going to be far too much work. So as the soil types change so quickly, I recommend you put it back on automatic seeding and automatic fertilization. And just let it do its thing. And if we watch, um, I think we have two different soil types here. But because we're on loam, we're using, if you look at the variable seed rate where it says auto, we're on the green button, which means we're using the minimal needed seed. We don't have to apply extra seed, whereas in clay, well, we'll call it clay, uh, for all intents and purposes, for, um, well, even sandy loam, it changes a little bit. And it, no, it looks like this field's one that's fine. And for a while, we're going to just be on the minimal seed rate. Um, you can also look at the nitrogen or mineral fertilization application. And you can see we are applying what is needed for sorghum to bring it up to its optimal level. And that's varying a little bit depending on what's already in the ground. Um, as this field has been seeded, uh, has already been uh, fertilized once and harvested, there's a certain amount of nitrogen left in the field. As you can see, we've already got 40, well, it varies between 30 and 40 kilograms a hectare of nitrogen. And over here, where the soybeans were, we're going to do the same thing, except I'm going to be direct drilling corn into the field. Yeah, the cedar is a mod. Um... But if you don't have, sorry, the planter is a mod, but if you don't have the mod, you can always use the, it's this mod by Sid Modding, I believe, which is a great mod. Um, but if you don't have that mod, you can always use the base game seeder with a liquid fertilizer tank, which is the Kinsey Blue Drive seeder, and it'll do exactly the same thing. It's just a little bit narrower. That's why I use the, the John Deere. Plus, yeah, I'm John Deere green through and through. As you can see, 
it's still got exactly the same options as the other seat it did. It will do variable rate seating and it will also apply the correct amount of nitrogen as we go. Now I'm just going to cycle through the crops because not all the crops with a planter require variable rate seeding. Sunflowers and corn do. Soybeans do. Now you can plant soybeans as you know with either a planter or a seeder. Um, sugar beet does. But cotton for some reason doesn't. Cotton will just do its own thing. So let's get started with this field. And as you can see, both fields are using very, uh, leaving behind the stubble tillage. Now, because of the type of soil we're in here, we're in clay. And at the beginning, we were using the seed rate all the way up to the maximum. It, we had all three bars going. As the type of soil and seal chip in this field it changed, we're back down there, uh, we're back up to medium. We were at the base. So that's going to keep changing. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to seed these fields and I'm going to put some tractors back in the barn and then I'll bring you guys back in so we can have a look. I thought now was as good a time as any to take a look at what we meant by variable rate seeding and how it adjusts automatically to the field and the soil conditions. As you can see, it's standard here, it is low usage here, and it is high usage for seeds here. And if we scroll back over to the fields we've just done, same thing. If I change over one screen to soil types, you can see it corresponds almost perfectly to the seed rate corresponds almost perfectly to the soil types. Same as nitrogen and lime. Okay, next up, this is the field we just planted. And as you can see, it needs weeding and rolling. Well, I recommend we don't weed it right now because the only way we'll be able to weed it is with a mechanical weeder and we don't get the full bonus for that. Uh, but it does need rolling and all my tractors are tied up right now, so I can't do the rolling. But you can see the nitrogen and the pH levels are perfect, which means we are going to get a 123% yield bonus over the 100% we would get, well, it's going to be slightly more than 123. It's going to be 125 when we roll it. So that's 25% more than we would get base game. Now, this field here, this had corn in it, as you can see. And I have plowed half of it. And this is an interesting thing is plowing according to giants plowing gives us zero percent towards our environmental score like i said because it is the most intrusive of the tillage types however this field here that I purchased, when I purchased it, it had had um, sugar beet in it. So it had to be plowed. Well, I had to mulch it, then I had to plow it, and then I had to seed and roll it. And as you can see, oh, I, um, a tillage, which is the one at the bottom on this field, is maximum. So even though we plowed it, we don't seem to have taken a hit. And I have one more point as far as that goes in one second. 
I knew it was speaking of that other field, uh, I forgot to do something. When I checked, yeah, I forgot to roll it. I knew there was something in the back of my mind that I had forgot to do. I won't be forgetting to roll these fields. Anyway, this is the difference between, and I saved the game, this is the difference between plowing and not plowing. This area here, where it's nice and clear, has been plowed, and we're gonna get 8.5 tons a hectare. Over here, we're down to eight tons a hectare, or 115%. So we have lost Well, we've gained a little bit of yield from the precision farming, but we have lost, well, 8.4, 8.5, and we're down to eight tons a hectare. So we're losing five tons a hectare, which is quite a bit of yield by not plowing. So it offsets, it more than offsets any gain we get from our environmental score. So let me just reload the game and I'm gonna finish doing this field properly. Okay, where were we? Were we, I should say. Sorry, I had somebody come to the door trying to sell something and I'm, they didn't wanna take no for an answer. Yeah, I was gonna show you an, um, the environmental map. If we look at this field, 42, we have exactly the same thing as we do in this one, which we're both direct drilled. And the bottom score is the tillage score. And as you can see, it's all the way to the right. The only thing we're missing is weed control, which we won't be able to do, I don't think, because, well, there will be no f weeds in this field because it's plowed. But again, like I said, the, um, the fact that we plowed it, the 15% boost from that makes up for the small penalty we are taking here. The other thing that's interesting to look at is, and this seems to be a bug with... The in-game planters, not with pH, there we go. These fields were all done with the in-game planters. Notice how the nitrogen levels have little strips where they're higher and lower than the rest. And it didn't happen over here. With the John Deere modded one. Now, the only thing I can think of is, is, is it's got to do with the accuracy of uh, the RTK system and how the in-game, you know, in the pre-precision farming, the instruments would overlap a little bit. Um, they would go back over areas you had already gone over. Just by a, just by a hair, like um, maybe a foot or two. Um, that's the only thing that I can think is causing that. Is the RTK system is supposed to have eliminated that, so that the planters, the, the in-game planters anyway, because they would have been the ones by giants, are supposed to line up exactly. And it looks like there's a tiny little gap between it where the nitrogen is not getting applied. Now, that's not the end of the world because that's happened up here too in this field. Where we have an almost perfect environmental score. And even though it's happening there, what we can do is we'll take that's where my missing tractor was i remember that now we'll take this tractor with a fertilizer spreader we'll turn on the automatic sensor 
watch the nitrogen video to understand why. So the crop sensor is turned on. And it seems to be picking up, like it, look, it's, it's only applying a tiny amount of nitrogen. So it seems to be picking up the areas that got missed or weren't as deeply seeded. Now, if you also remember from the nitrogen video, Giants talks about the fact that crops either lose or gain a little bit, especially with seasons on. We don't have seasons on, but as they grow, their nitrogen levels change slightly. So I don't know if the reason it's working in this field is because the nitrogen levels have changed slightly because the crop's grown, but either way, 42 meter spread on this spreader means we're gonna cover this field in no time. And if you look, we are hardly using any fertilizer whatsoever. And we're getting rid of those nasty little lines. So the lines are gone and the field should be perfect. Um, but for some reason it's still at 97%. Whether that will change after harvest, because remember things are not supposed to update till after harvest or not, I don't know. I mean, this field's been fertilized, but it's not really showing anything. Yet this field is showing that it's been perfectly fertilized. This one is perfectly fertilized. And this one is almost perfectly fertilized. So, there seem to be a few anomalies. We will find out when it comes to harvest time in these fields exactly what's going on. Um, because the harvest will round up and finish out our environmental score. Um, don't think it's working 100% as intended. I think there's a few little bugs that Giants needs to figure out, like especially why those lines are being created by their drills. And I'm only using Giants drills apart from the John Deere, which has put perfect nitrogen, I'll show you, in these fields. Perfect. See, it's not changing at all. There's no lines, there's no variance in the fertilization, but I bet when we come to harvest it, it'll be fine. And so, apart from that, I don't know what to say, uh, other than thank you for watching. I hope you found this video useful. And like I said, stay tuned. The next one is gonna be weed control. It should be a little bit shorter. And then, we will be back to hopefully harvest time. Take care and, oh, and by the way, when it comes to looking at our overall environmental score, like I said, I have a surprise for you guys. So take care and thanks for watching.